Holy crap, baskets. That is a massive explosion. And to think it was caused by an underwater volcano. That's right, we're gonna be talking about the Tonga Underwater Volcano, which is right now the most destructive volcanic eruption ever caught on camera since the start of the space age. So let's go ahead and jump right into things. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Mind's Horizon, and this is Science Gat. An Earth-watching satellite caught a massive explosion in the South Pacific. Hunga Tunga Hunga Haapi, from the years 2009 to 2022, was an uninhabited island. Was, as in past tense. These were originally two islands, but in 2009, a volcanic eruption fused them together. This has effectively been reversed with the eruptions that took place from late December until January 14th and 15th, when all hell broke loose. As you can see from this satellite imagery, the explosion was absolutely massive and sent a shockwave around the world. In fact, the initial explosion was so powerful that it was clearly audible in New Zealand. This is a distance of 2,439 kilometers, 1,515 miles. Now, there's no official word on how powerful this explosion was. That'll have to wait for some careful scientific analysis but I have a sneaking suspicion that we'll be measuring this sucker in megatons. What is clear is that the eruption on January 15th created an ash cloud 15.2 kilometers, 9.44 miles high, which later grew to 30 kilometers, 12 miles high. This created an absolutely massive ash cloud covering a diameter of 260 kilometers, 161 miles. Later, wind swept and distorted the cloud's shape, pushing them toward Australia. The seismic activity generated by the volcanic explosion also sent 1.2 meter, four foot tsunami waves through Tonga's capital, Nuku Alofa, probably 20 minutes after these beach-faring citizens heard the thunderous initial explosion. That evening, the capital of Tonga was covered in a thick layer of volcanic ash, and it's unknown how this event will impact the food supply of the island. As of writing this script, it's unknown how many, if any, casualties have resulted from the climactic explosion. Last I heard, though, their internet service is still down, so we may not know the full impact for a while. Hours after the initial explosion, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and the entire west coast of the United States all got a tsunami warning. In Japan alone, 230,000 people were forced to evacuate from their homes. The exact cause for the tsunami is unknown, but experts are suggesting either a shockwave propagating through seawater or a landslide from part of the undersea volcano collapsing are likely culprits. To put this in a bit of perspective, only about 5% of all tsunamis in recorded history have ever been caused by a volcanic eruption. One such explosion was the eruption of Krakatoa in 1883, which generated a powerful tsunami that swept over the Indian Ocean, traveling something like 4,000 kilometers. The west coast of the United States is over 6,000 kilometers from Hunga Tonga Island. So, you know, the word wow seems like an understatement here. While the volcanic eruption has so far not been attributed to anyone dying near or around the islands it was closest to, two people did drown off a beach in Peru. The tsunamis also caused a ton of damage in Santa Cruz, California. The tidal surge damaged boats in many places in the Pacific Ocean that were affected by the tsunami, in some cases sinking them and causing a ton of flooding. While all of that certainly sounds impressive, we've got some early numbers to take a look at. While the Hunga Tonga volcano only rose to 114 meters above sea level, the whole thing is around 20 kilometers wide and around 1.4 kilometers tall. What's really unfortunate about this is that the volcano was actually considered to be dormant again after the eruptions that started on December 20th had subsided. That decision on January 11th has proved to be a major mistake. The data currently pouring in is mostly about how the explosion has caused ripples in Earth's air pressure systems. The Earth's atmosphere acts very much like a liquid. When something disturbs it, much like when you throw a rock into a lake, it creates ripples. The Australian Bureau of Meteorology presented this data, which reveals that the shockwave generated from the volcanic eruption was moving at a speed greater than 1,000 kilometers per hour, or 621 miles per hour. That is just 234 kilometers, 146 miles per hour under the speed of sound. The graphs here show a significant jump in air pressure during the eruption, presented in two different waves. I mentioned earlier that the sound of the explosion was heard in New Zealand. 
but this sonic boom was also heard in Alaska, which is 9,000 kilometers, 5,592 miles away from the volcano. Those air pressure measurements, coupled with how this underwater volcano was able to generate an ash plume 30 kilometers, 12 miles high, and 260 kilometers, 160 miles in diameter, is evidence enough that this was a massive event. Putting the sound of the shockwaves in perspective, almost half of the planet heard it, and that's absolutely insane to think about. While we won't have exact measurements for the total energy released by the explosion for some time, volcanic eruptions of this magnitude are not as frequent as normal eruptions. But what exactly are normal eruptions? Well, any eruption that can't be felt across the planet, I would imagine. Part of me is a little tempted to compare this to a supervolcano eruption, but that seems a little far-fetched. Which brings us to the next section, assessing the damage that's been done so far. While Hunga Tonga is an impressive volcanic eruption, it would absolutely pale in comparison to Yellowstone if it were ever to erupt. Such a supervolcano eruption would cover all of the US and much of Mexico and Canada in a layer of ash, and this map shows which areas would be the most devastated. There's a good portion of the surrounding states around Yellowstone that would be just completely absolute dead zones. There would just be nothing left. Of course, getting back to Hunga Tonga, this is also not taking into account how much of the volcano's destructive force might have been reduced by the fact that it was underwater. Typically, volcanoes have something similar to the Richter scale when it comes to measuring their destructive force. It's called the Volcano Explosion Index, and it measures the total amount of material released from the volcano, going from zero, the lowest form of volcanic eruption, to an eight, which would be even more powerful than Yellowstone 600,000 years ago. Eruptions in Hawaii are typically recorded as zeros or ones, but this particular volcano has had a couple of explosions that registered a two on the VEI scale. However, our recorded history regarding this volcano only goes back to about 1912, and this thing is seriously much older than that. So for all we really know, explosions like this could be a little more frequent than we think now. The trouble with all of this, because we don't have all of the data in, is that we can't really assign a VEI number to it yet. I mean, the thing is still erupting, too. We've registered another eruption since the big one on the 15th. This is very much an active developing situation. According to some experts, it's even possible that we're in for a larger explosion in the future. It would be a mistake to think this is over, like we originally thought leading up to the events of January 14th through 15th. But, and this is speculation, <coughs> yes, thank you computer again. Given what we do know, it's possible this eruption may fall between a three and a five on the VEI, or possibly even a six if it's revealed that the explosion could have been much worse than we thought. Mount St. Helens was a four on the VEI, and its ash plume was 64 kilometers wide and 24 kilometers high, or 40 miles and 15 miles respectively. So the numbers are similar at least at a glance. All told, the explosive force from this volcano destroyed three islands, generated an absolutely huge ash cloud, and sent 1.2 meter four foot tall tsunamis all across the Pacific Ocean. This was a big deal. And I'm willing to bet this won't be the last time we'll be talking about it. If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like, comment down below, and smash that subscribe button and all that other algorithmic jazz. And hey, if you dig volcanism, check out this nearly ancient video I did on the strange volcanoes of Venus. Two words, pancake volcano. And wow, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.